So today we're going to talk about light. And the reason, the reason that I want to go into light is that one thing I found over the years in running workshops and teaching photography is that a lot of photographers feel like they have to work on their composition. They feel like composition is the thing that they're really lacking. And composition is important. Uh, the technical aspects of photography are important. How to work your camera, yeah, that's important too. But all of these things tend to sort of skip over the big hurdle, which is lighting. That you can actually have some pretty simple composition. And if you have really good lighting, the picture is going to... It's going, to, it's going to potentially have a lot of power. So what we're going to focus on today is looking at some of the pictures that I've seen over the years that have really influenced my own work. Um, pictures that like, you, this has happened to you. You walk into a gallery, you walk into a museum, you see a painting, you see a photograph, and the, it just absolutely stops you. It, for whatever reason, on that day, the way the light's coming through the window, the way that picture glows, it just works for you in a way that has never worked before. And those moments are really important. And they, I think they're the type of moments that, in a way, you can't really dissect them. You know, um, one example that I like to give is that, you know, looking at lighting and breaking it down from a technical standpoint, from a scientific standpoint, it almost, in a way, it kind of misses the point. Um, you know, it's like looking at the expression on somebody's face, you know, whether you're looking at <clears throat> their eyes or a smile and talking about eyelashes or teeth, you know, teeth don't really explain a smile. A smile that like does it for you has got nothing to do with teeth. You could study and be a dentist, you know, for five generations. It's not ever going to really capture what that particular smile was for you. Um, so that when we work in workshops and you know when I'm shooting on my own, I like to work with models, both professional and non-professional. And it's useful to understand certain technical aspects of photography. And there's piles and piles of books on lighting and how to operate your camera. But what happens is, is that we kind of lose sight of the fact that the light that we're working with is, in most cases, something that happens every day. We're talking sun up and sun down. It's a naturally occurring phenomenon and it's something that we're really in the presence of and we don't have all that much control over. Um, but we'd like to know sort of how it works and how we can interact with it. So just to give you some examples of um, lighting that's really stood out for me, uh, this painting by Michelangelo, the Donitondo, which is in the Uffizi in Florence. This was a painting that I had looked at for years. I mean, I think since I was an early teenager, maybe even younger, could have been you know, 11 or 12, um, this was a painting to me that just, even on a piece of paper, the painting just seemed to glow. The figures felt so three-dimensional uh, that it, it just caught my attention in a way that very few other paintings had. And, um, you know, I think it's interesting when you, when you consider light and how light works and how light wraps around form that Michelangelo never fancied himself a painter. You know, he always considered himself a sculptor. And I think that this cross of understanding form in three dimensions and how that really translated into a painting allowed him to make a painting that I, you know, in comparison to his contemporaries, I think it really stands out. And it's the type of painting that I think even you looking at it on the screen, the painting just kind of glows. It's almost as if it like the light comes from inside of it and it explodes outward. Um, and we'll talk about some of the, uh, the types of light and the history of light in art that will kind of frame where this thing, where this type of painting uh, lives. The next painting that was really you know, influential for me, I remember seeing, I was in university, I was living in London at the time, and there was a Caravaggio exhibition that came to England, and I, I hadn't seen this painting of, it's a young St. John the Baptist. I'd never seen this painting before by him. Um, at that point, I wasn't terribly into Caravaggio. I sort of knew who he was. We had done some painting work from, uh, from his paintings uh, 
as academic studies, but he wasn't somebody who I would describe as, you know, this is my favorite painter. He was really influential for me. But when I walked into the gallery and I saw this painting on, you know, it was clear on the other side, it was, there was something kind of transformative in it. There was just something so strong and so powerful in lighting that the kind of like ivory quality skin that John the Baptist has here just seemed to sort of bounce right off the canvas. And it wasn't, there was something different in that a lot of painting, you know, you look at and it's designed as a window into a world so that you look inside the frame as if you were looking through like a portal on a ship and you look into another world. Um, this was one of those paintings that like, it just seemed to want to jump out of that world. It wasn't content residing inside of the frame or on the canvas. It really wanted to project itself out. And, you know, when you look at it from a composition standpoint, it's not terribly complicated. I mean, this is a single portrait of a guy leaning to our left. I mean, there is, this is not something where we're dealing with multiple figures. The background itself is it's almost obscured in darkness. We're just given a little bit of the setting and all of it really falls away with him being the subject, but it's a pretty simple subject. It's probably something that like, if you took this painting and had to recreate it in a photograph, you probably have everything in your house to be able to do this. There's, there's nothing, you got to stick a bundle of fabric and a person. You just need the person and that would be it. So, you know, I, I think when we start to assess what our strengths and weaknesses are and what we really need to develop. It's helpful to look at really powerful pieces of art that are incredibly simple. There's really, there's not that much to them. It's a single subject in a dark field. You can look at this now and you can say that's a light figure on a dark ground. You now have that language to apply to it. And we're going to look at kind of how Caravaggio is one of the artists built up his understanding of light. Uh, the next painting, this is a painting that's at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York, so it's kind of a hometown favorite. Um, and it's a painting by uh, Bierstadt of Landers Peak. And this is, I may offend some of the uh, Ansel Adams fans in the crowd, but to me, this is what a Ansel Adams was trying to do. And at the time, limited in black and white, just couldn't be done. Um, I think landscape... The early landscape painting uh, of the American painting tradition is just heads and shoulders above what the uh, photo photographic tradition could really do. Um, and when you stand in front of this painting, for, I mean, first it's a massive painting. Bierstadt's canvases are all, most of them are huge. So they're, they're incredibly imposing. They're almost panoramic if you stand close enough to them. Um, but this painting is just all about light. It's about the way the light falls down on the waterfall and the subject in the central panel of the painting. It's about the light and the atmospheric perspective as it obscures the mountains in the background. I mean, everything about this painting is so big. You look at the figures in the foreground, you know, you look at the animals and, the, and everything is just, it, it's so tiny in relationship to the magnitude of what this scene offers. And, you know, when you make a picture and you have your perspective, you have your impression, which is, you know, it's something that you should be able to put into your images. You know, I, there, I don't think there's, there's really nothing more gratifying than being able to take your unique view of the world, you know, your perspective and put it into a picture in a way that somebody else can look at that picture and really feel your view and feel your view is unique. Um, it's one thing that I've, I believe, I don't think I'd be an artist if I didn't believe it, but I think history has shown us that what artists can do, which is not limited to people who are professional artists, is that everybody can see something that nobody else sees. There is just a way that you can look at the world from a certain angle, from a certain perspective, from a certain intensity of light and view and subject. And it's something that people may have seen, you know, people have seen mountains before, you know, this was not the first time that somebody painted a waterfall, but the way that, that it was done, the way that he saw it, that was really unique. So what we're trying to do is really take some tools that allow you to do this and take the tools and apply them to your vision 
so that you can get to something that is for you truly unique and something that other people will really enjoy. And this was this is something that really reads on the surface for me with Beerstat is that it really comes it comes out in the strength of light as the subject and that everything else is almost a supporting actor for the light. Um, the the last one uh, by Caspar David Friedrich. This is one that you know. It there's something special about this because photography for me has always been tethered to going out and exploring things. You know, as a painter, you know, you could paint a studio, you could paint from your imagination, you could go, uh, you could go out and have an experience, and then come back, and then you'd sit at an easel, and the arrangements it's always sort of the same. You know, it's like it's the artist in front of a blank piece of canvas or a blank piece of paper, then creating a world. The fun thing about photography, to me, one of the things that kind of keeps me engaged in it is that you get to really go out in the world and explore. And the camera is just a, it's a tool for exploration that you can take along, whether it's your morning commute or whether you're going to, you know, Antarctica to make photographs. It's something that you bring along that lets you take those unique views, those unique perspectives and bring them back. And, you know, as you look at bodies of work that you really enjoy, as you go to galleries and museums and you see artists and photographers that you admire, just take note, you know, keep in your notebook, which ones really had to do with the subject, you know, whether, whether Friedrich was really interested here in like the chemical composition of ice you know, I don't really think so. I think ice is just the platform for landing light. And it's all about the lighting and the color that he's working with here that really fascinates him. So that, you know, it's, it's not so, you know, we're not necessarily photojournalists. We're not wed to a certain truth in photography. And in fact, photography doesn't necessarily lend itself um, that well to truthful statements. It's an observation from a point of view. It's going to have a bias. And in most cases, that bias is a good thing. Um, so what we're going to, you know, what we're going to look at today are a range of paintings and photographs. And what we can do is we can just set the subject aside. You know, whether, whether it's a piece of architecture, whether it's a person, whether it's an environment, cityscape, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to focus on the light and we're going to see how we can get good light in our images, how we can find it and how we can do it consistently so that we can build up and look at how artists have gone from simpler lighting to more complicated lighting and really have made that hurdle of showing us, you know, this is a photograph of the street corner, the way that it looks. And like, this is something where I feel the morning sun just pouring onto it and the light, you know, something which we can't touch, we can't pick up, we can't move around. Um, that light starts to feel like a, a, a material part of the subject. I mean, it, you feel like you could step into the, to the light that exists in the painting or in the photograph. So that's what we're going to work on today.